uh hi everyone uh welcome to texila american uh, university webinar uh, medical education worldwide challenges and opportunities uh, i'm sorry it took a bit of time for us to set up the things uh, my name is sharad i'm the director of admission for texila american university and uh, we have been working closely with your school to deliver this uh, presentation today and uh, i hope this will be helpful for anybody who would want to build a career in medicine so this is done by my provost of the university dr hugh deckworth uh, a few words about him uh, dr hugh basically has been done has more than 30 years of experience in a variety of high intensity crisis intervention management and leadership roles he is a disciplined committed and rever responsive individual with strong interpersonal skills that are complementary to results based on problem solving orientation and he has expertise in analysis interpretation and presentation of complex medical data dr duckworth comes with a unique background of clinical management and educational leadership experience experiences so over to him so he will be basically taking the session today and answer your question so if anybody has a question during the session please make a note of it and we will be answering this question at the end of the session uh, over to you dr q thank you very much uh, i am uh, dr hugh duckworth the uh, provost for Excella American uh, University. Uh, I've been with the university now for about five years. Uh, I, a little bit about myself but to uh, more detail. Uh, I went to medical school at the University of Tennessee in the United States in Memphis, Tennessee. I did my internship and residency also in Tennessee in, in general surgery. Uh, I spent uh, about 10 years practicing general surgery and four years practicing emergency medicine in the United States, uh, and then went into academic medicine in the Caribbean. I, I became first professor uh, at Saber University, uh, and then the dean and executive dean. And then I was also the provost at St. James University prior to coming to Texilla. Uh, so um, I've pretty much uh, experienced the medical world from uh, as we've been a uh, today, we'll talk about uh, some challenges and opportunities, in particular for uh, you uh, young students who uh, may see medicine as a possibility uh, for your future. Uh, and when we talk about these uh, challenges uh, and opportunities that occur uh, in medical education, they are definitely linked uh, to a number of major issues, as you can see listed here. Uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about each and every one of these issues today uh, and how these issues impact medical education, uh, how med medical education has to adapt to these kinds of issues, uh, and also how uh, it uh, may perhaps open up opportunities uh, going forward. First, uh, you, we must talk about advancements in medical knowledge uh, and how uh, medical education adapts. Um, uh, medical knowledge is uh, ongoing. Uh, thank goodness, it's it's uh, always uh, something that is uh, coming uh, from very active uh, and very robust research projects all around the world. And as you probably are aware, on a daily basis, we're almost in new innovations and new uh, methods in teaching a variety of diseases, especially with. Uh, autoimmune diseases and those types. It's a very exciting time right now. Uh, and as these new developments uh, uh, develop and are uh, uh, are uh, confirmed with the scientific method and so forth, uh, they must be adapted into practice and indeed into our educational system. And this is what this is the mandate of uh, the medical education system is to be able to teach medical students uh, the the most up to date and the most relevant uh, information uh, that is available at the time. And this is an ongoing process. It never ends for medical schools. Technology. Technology is always evolving, and it's always a process. For every generation, there's always new technology, thank goodness. Uh, and uh, today, uh, we must adapt our educational processes and indeed our practice of medicine uh, two new innovations in technology. 
uh, uh, we must be able to adapt and determine what types of uh, technology are beneficial and which are not. Uh, and once this is done, then this must also be integrated and adapted into the medical uh, education curriculum. Uh, and this is the mandate of all major uh, medical uh, schools around the world. Uh, the, we also have to uh, be certain that our faculty uh, are up to date uh, with uh, training uh, and uh, uh, continuing medical education. Uh, and these are all very important issues that are uh, continuously evolving and being adapted. Unfortunately, around the globe, uh, there are disparities uh, in uh, medical care and health care. Uh, and medical education uh, uh, in medical schools in general, it is our mandate uh, to make our students aware of these disparities so that uh, going forward somehow, uh, little by little, these disparities can be managed and hopefully uh, completely eliminated. Uh, so we must uh, be able to... Uh, uh, teach these uh, uh, facts uh, in our courses, uh, and uh, that requires us to be aware of them and to stay abreast of changes uh, around the globe. One factor that is, is a major issue, uh, particularly these days after we uh, recover, so to speak, from the pandemic, um, you know, medical education all around the globe uh, was significantly affected, as well as uh, the practice of medicine. Uh, and uh, the psychological well-being and health of uh, medical students uh, and indeed uh, physicians and, and healthcare workers in general uh, is uh, certainly a very important uh, factor that we must all be aware of um, and uh, be uh, abreast of the latest findings uh, in terms of, of uh, psychological impact of uh, the very high stressful career and uh, educational process. Uh, at Texilla American University, from, from day one, uh, we have begun uh, integrating this type of uh, well-being uh, evaluation for students uh, from, from the very first day they begin our medical school. They're assigned a faculty mentor as well as a student mentor. And then also there uh, are other uh, uh, programs that are available for students uh, who want to seek extra help. Uh, but it is very important throughout the medical health care system uh, to uh, balance these uh, very stressful and uh, rigorous schedules uh, with, a, with a normal activity in daily life. And it's important we teach students to take care of themselves uh, from the very beginning so that they can be a more effective uh, physician uh, and health care uh, manager going forward. Also, uh, we must be aware that uh, around the globe, uh, demographics and population tend to change. Uh, we are seeing in the developed world, particularly in the United States, and I understand also in certain, like in, for example, in Japan, uh, the uh, older population uh, uh, percentage has increased significantly. Uh, this has led to uh, new specialty areas uh, being developed uh, in medicine. Uh, here in the U.S., for example, uh, geriatrics has become a new uh, specialty. Uh, and this is an example of how medical education uh, in our area has adapted to a changing a dynamic or, or a changing dynamic of the population. Um, and this has to be integrated. Uh, these changes, no matter what they are, must be uh, integrated into the uh, curricula of the uh, medical uh, system. Collaboration. Uh, this is a, a, a key mandate uh, of medical education, and we uh, begin teaching our students this from uh, the very beginning. Uh, as physicians and healthcare workers, we must be able to work together. We must be able to collaborate uh, one area of expertise with another. Uh, for example, physicians on a daily basis have to interact with, with uh, nurses, of course, pharmacists, um, biochemists uh, and other types of laboratory uh, specialists, pathologists, and so forth. So we must be able to interact and, and work uh, together uh, all the way from uh, the people uh, who are uh, uh, actually uh, doing the work in, uh, in the uh, uh, OR or in, in the uh, OB suite uh, to the 
uh, top manager in the uh, CEO's office. Everyone has to be able to work together. And this is a, uh, a process that we began teaching uh, from the very beginning uh, in uh, Middle American University. Access to quality American, excuse me, quality uh, education uh, varies widely around the globe, as we all know, from one region or country to another. Uh, and this leads to disparities in uh, medical education, and this persists. And this is the mandate of, of uh, not any particular medical school, but it is the mandate of medical education worldwide, globally. Uh, and uh, there are organizations that have been developed that I will talk about here in just a moment uh, that help gauge the quality of medical education, no matter whether you're in uh, North America or in the Middle East or somewhere else. Uh, you can be assured that if this organization uh, has approved a, a medical school or a healthcare organization, that it is uh, uh, committed uh, to quality uh, uh, education and healthcare. Assessment methods. It is a mandate of, uh, of medical education to stay abreast of the latest assessment methods. And this is uh, uh, integrated uh, to a large extent with technology, the changes in technology and the changes in uh, treatment and research. We have to be able to uh, teach these things to students and then also assess those uh, abilities. Uh, and this kind of goes hands in hand, hand, hand in hand. This process goes hand in hand with uh, education in general and the latest techniques uh, and uh, um, uh, ways to uh, teach uh, people uh, vary. And it is it is the mandate of a medical school abreast of the latest changes in medical education and, uh, and in general education uh, and uh, make changes accordingly. It is also important for medical schools to realize, too, that uh, they shouldn't just adopt every single change in, in the uh, assessment methods that comes along without first uh, vetting this uh, type uh, of assessment uh, extensively to be uh, sure that indeed it does represent uh, accurately uh, the knowledge base of your students. Healthcare systems vary widely around the world and it is also important uh, for medical education and medical schools to adapt uh, or be able to at least be aware of the different types of uh, healthcare uh, systems around the world uh, and to be able to uh, uh, teach uh, your students and our students the um, uh, different types of healthcare systems. It's very important for students, uh, especially if they want to practice in a particular area, to uh, understand exactly how that healthcare system uh, is uh, arranged and how it's made up and what is the best way to enter that healthcare system. Our graduates are, uh, uh, we, we give them extensive counseling depending on what area they want to go into and what region of the world they want to go to. We uh, we have a very div diverse student body at Texas American University. And uh, so uh, what we uh, uh, are mandated with is that we uh, help these students get licensed in various parts of the world. And we'll talk more about that here. In but it's important that we understand what those requirements are uh, and help students get educated on that depending on where they want to go. So it, it is important that, you know, medical education in general and healthcare in general. Uh, collaborate uh, with a variety of fields and areas and stay abreast of the latest changes, not only in technology and research, but also in social issues. Uh, and try to uh, uh, communicate this and to instruct this to our students and our graduates uh, so that they can be the best positions uh, possible uh, going forward uh, and after graduation. And with that, I think rather than questions, I'll move on uh, to uh, uh, Texas American University uh, itself. Um, and uh, we'll uh, do questions at the very end. Uh, Texas American University uh, was established in 2010 uh, in Guyana, uh, in Georgetown, Guyana, uh, which is in South America. Hi, Dr. Hill. Yeah, hi. Hello. So my question is, 
which field is the medical line which is not so common and which can be a great figure of earning and to serving the community? I'm sorry, repeat that again? A little slower. Which, which field in the medical line is not so common and can be great figure of earning and can be a serving to community at high level? Which specialty? Yeah, is that like, question? yeah. Well, you know, that varies from one community to another. Uh, here in the United States, for example, we every community is in great need of, of primary care. Primary care uh, physicians uh, are made up of, of family medicine physicians, internal medicine physicians, uh, and to some extent, OBGYN physicians. Um, those are considered primary care and are in great demand here in the United States. That may be different in Europe or it may be different in the areas of of uh, South America. Uh, Guyana's in South America. Uh, OBGYNs are in uh, very much demand there, um, more so than other places. So it's important, you know, that first you choose what's what area you want to go to, and then you determine what the need is. But my, my advice is, is uh, I would, uh, as a young student going forward, uh, I would uh, go where your heart tells you to. I would do what you want to do, what is excites you, what makes you uh, happy, uh, what what do you enjoy learning about? Because believe me, you're going to have to do a lot of studying in, in this particular area, uh, and it's vital that you enjoy it. Because if you don't, you won't be able to finish. It. Well, let's go ahead and talk. finish talking about uh, Exila, and then we'll take more questions. Is that okay? All right. Okay. 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 Like I was saying, Exila was uh, founded in 2010 uh, in uh, Georgetown, Guyana, and since that time has uh, grown dramatically. The infrastructure on campus has uh, grown extensively. Uh, and, and to the point where uh, now Excel American University is uh, a major educational source in Guyana, in particular uh, for the uh, medical school. Uh, I was talking earlier about, about the uh, differences uh, around the world in uh, uh, medical schools and, and indeed in uh, medical education. And, and it's difficult to be able to know exactly uh, how well one compares to the other uh, if, if there was no other benchmark. Uh, but there is an organization called the World Federation of Medical Education, and it's the global body uh, that recognize, recognizes medical schools uh, and their quality. Uh, and there is a minimum set of quality that has to be met. Uh, before any medical school can achieve accreditation uh, by this organization. And what this organization does is it, it accredits organizations that accredit medical schools. So um, the WFME has accredited two organizations that Texilla has uh, now been accredited by. One is ACCM, the other is CAMHP. Um, ACCM is out of Ireland, and CAMHP is the uh, Caribbean uh, organization that is responsible, uh, and both of these organizations are responsible for accrediting healthcare organizations, including medical schools, and they are recognized to do so by the World Federation of Medical Education. That gives them legitimacy, and therefore gives Excella American University legitimacy. Why is this important? This is important for you as a potential student because it's important for you to know that when you graduate, you will be able to get licensed, practice medicine, or to do postgraduate training virtually anywhere in the world, anywhere in the developed world, you'll be able to get licensed uh, if you graduate from a medical school who's been accredited by these organization, organizations such as Texilla has been. And if there are questions about that at the end, we can discuss. So we've recently been accredited by both of these organizations. ACCM gave us accreditation for six years, CAMHP for three years. There is a continuous process. We can't just rest on our laurels. We have to continue to meet the standards set by these accrediting bodies. Uh, so there's a yearly evaluation process, uh, but we've been given uh, a full accreditation by both of these organizations. 
What does it take to get into medical school, in particular, Texilla American University? Uh, this is the classic pre-medical uh, requirement. Uh, that is inorganic chemistry and general chemistry, as you can see here, uh, biology, physics, English. And English is important because it is the language of medicine around the world and also medical education. And it is important that a student's command of English be, be uh, uh, very good. Uh, also, uh, calculus and so forth. Texel American University has an excellent pre-med program. As you may know, there are different types of medical education uh, models around the world. In North America, in uh, US and Canada, uh, all, of, all medical students have a, uh, a, a, a college degree. Uh, they also have the prerequisites for medical school. Uh, in Europe and, and Britain, for the most part, uh, students apply to medical school directly out of uh, when they finish high school. Texel American University's pre-med program, program can accommodate any level of student, whether they are a high school level student uh, who uh, has met the criteria for pre-med, uh, or if they are a uh, college level student who needs just a few more uh, pre-med uh, pre requirements to uh, qualify for medical school, Texel American University's pre-med program can help you out uh, and give you uh, what you need to be ready to apply to medical school and to be competitive. So uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, counselors uh, can discuss this a little bit more with you if you're interested, and it's an excellent way for uh, students to uh, go to medical school. When a student applies to medical school at Texas American University, uh, first they're required to uh, sit for the TMAT, the Texas uh, Medical Admission Test. This is a uh, medical, uh, uh, excuse me, a multiple choice uh, uh, exam uh, that uh, is 200 basic science questions. And this, this just covers the uh, general prerequisites for pre-med and students are required uh, to pass for the 70% score. This is an exam that's created uh, and maintained uh, by Texilla uh, faculty. Uh, we've used this for a number of years and found that it works quite well. Once a student clears the uh, TMAT, uh, then they uh, are uh, ready for the MMI. This is the uh, multiple uh, mini interview process. And this is where they uh, go through a process of very short interviews with several uh, members of the Texilla Medical School fac faculty. Uh, and this is basically a typical interview that assesses uh, uh, the student's uh, ability to uh, problem solve and to understand questions and so forth. Also a major factor for this interview is uh, to get a good handle on how well the uh, uh, student's command of English is uh, so that they uh, can be better prepared for uh, medical school. Then uh, once a student uh, passes and clears these uh, pre-med hurdles, and they're accepted into medical school, of course, they begin uh, the process of MD-1. As I mentioned earlier, uh, for students who come uh, to Texilla, we have a very extensive orientation program uh, for them uh, that goes through the entire process of, of helping them um, uh, adapt and to become familiar with the community there in uh, Guyana. Uh, to you know, the local stores, the, the best places to go, all those things. Students are given a student mentor who helps them uh, with all of these questions. Housing is provided for the students. Uh, and we also uh, give them an important uh, student mentor. Uh, the entire orientation process is extensive and the counselors can go through that with you. Uh, the mentors are kept throughout the medical school process and the orientation really continues throughout. Uh, it's part of the, uh, uh, self-help, self-care process for students. The uh, first year, as you can see, students take uh, the classic uh, curriculum of anatomy, histology, so forth. Uh, the doctor-patient relationship is an important class, as well as we begin the research methodology, methodology course. This is important because it actually is uh, continued throughout the basic sciences, and at the end, students are, act, are able to to uh, publish a paper. 
One very important thing I need to mention about our basic science program and indeed our clinical sciences program is that the final exams for all of our major courses, that is anatomy uh, and uh, biochemistry, so, um, all of the, those final exams are, are the National Board of Medical Examiners final exam in that particular subject. In other words, anatomy, uh, when they finish anatomy, it, uh, the final exam is the NBME in anatomy. This is a, uh, a institutionalized exam that's given around the world. NBME is a U.S. Uh, organization that actually is responsible for developing and, and administering the United States medical licensing exam. Uh, so those are the same organizations. Um, and uh, they make uh, exams for all of these courses. They're all online exams. Texillo American University has been approved by NBME as an official testing center. And so all, all of our uh, basic science courses, uh, the, the, the uh, final exam is the National Board of Medical Exam. That's important, and we'll, I'll tell you about that here in a moment. As they move through uh, to MD2, they continue with the basic science courses, the neurosciences, genetics, uh, with more extensive study in the behavioral sciences. The DPR course continues, and research methodology, uh, and, uh, of course, neuro. Going forward, uh, pharmacology uh, begins, and then uh, the very important course of uh, pathology. Uh, all of these are very uh, important basic science core courses that help develop a young budding physician. By the time the students meet, uh, reach MD4, uh, they're uh, finishing up uh, with their basic science core, and they're ready for the next semester, the fifth semester, which is transition. Transition semester is very important. Uh, this is uh, where the students now undergo an intensive basic science review course. This is actually a uh, review course that's set up by Kaplan. Uh, it's a, a review uh, a company uh, out of the United States that has review courses for a variety of, of uh, topics. Uh, and uh, we uh, give uh, the students this entire review course. It covers every bit of basic sciences. Uh, it's actually an official class and uh, attendance is required. Uh, we also, during the transition semester, uh, doing a, a more extensive introduction to clinical skills course. Uh, this is a, an extension of what they learned in the doctor-patient relationship a course all throughout basic sciences. Uh, and then at, one, at the end of this semester, students will then sit for the National Board of Medical Examiners Comprehensive Basic Science Exam. Uh, and this exam uh, is the culmination of basic science. It, it's uh, given by the same organization, as I mentioned, that gives USMLE. Um, and indeed, um, we have found that students who do well on this uh, NBME comprehensive exam in basic sciences uh, have a very, very high uh, percentage uh, of passing uh, step one of the USMLE. Uh, the Kaplan Review course is directed uh, directly at this exam to help uh, students prepare. Once they pass that exam and move forward, they're ready for their clinical rotations. Uh, they're ready for their third year. This is 76 uh, weeks uh, of clinical rotations, uh, both at Guyana Public uh, Hospital and Tucson Medical Center. Here, there's students can uh, do clinical rotations in internal medicine and general surgery, pediatrics, psychiatry, OBGYN, and family medicine. These are the core rotations. All of these rotations, uh, the final exam is the National Board of Medical Examiners just as the basic science courses, preparing students for uh, their comprehensive exam at the end. Their fourth year electives are, uh, can be just about anything, whatever the student uh, uh, is interested in and uh, whatever uh, he or she and their mentor has decided is best for them, depending on what specialty they want to go in. So that's the end. I see many people have left. Uh, but any questions? Uh, Dr. Hugh, uh, they have an examination immediately followed by the webinar, so they're just leaving to the exams hall. Sure, but I, I can understand. From the time we have finished the session, so uh, the rest of the students who are sitting at the hall, 
we are open to questions uh, any questions regarding the university about the medical program about the admission criteria and the next steps please feel free to ask sorry how many igcse exam we have to give to enter igcse yes so we see the the basic program the five year of program where we will be doing the one year of pre med and two years of basic science two years of clinical rotation the five years of course we recommend the students to finish the a levels all right and uh, that basically we look for and we also look for the science subjects like physics chemistry biology any of the major two sciences as a part of the basic entry criteria however we will be also having an mmi which is called as multiple mini interview where would be also evaluating your competencies like critical thinking logical reasoning situational awareness and your communication skills as well so to answer your question you could basically finish your a levels and then you can apply for the uh, directly for the five year of program or if you are in as level if you have not completed the a if you have completed as level then you will be probably doing a 5.5 year of program where we'll be doing a 1.5 years of the foundational course instead of one year is that answering your question yes it does right okay. do, you, do, you combined science? do you accept combined science uh when you say combined science what what subjects does it include like all subjects combined like we have a we have a specific criteria where we have like physics chemistry and uh, biology all combined together so do you accept that uh i think that should be okay dr hugh want to add on to that well yes it's probably okay we'd have to look at the course but i think it would be okay many courses are doing now it's called molecular biology something like that right yeah so yeah. these are all are yeah so they are like lfas or igcse students so i think we will have to see the curriculum and see what are the credits you have what are the uh, subjects that the courses that you have covered in each of the subject and based on that evaluation we can uh, let you know about the uh, you know join whether it could be one year or a 1.5 euro pre med to answer your question yes we would accept that okay okay thank you so much sure you welcome so uh, i think uh, you know uh, i i hope asma is also there close by so asma we would you know definitely i would definitely come you know to personally visit your uh, you know school and we could also look into conduct uh, you know like a pay workshop as well uh, in person so that we could give answer more questions and you know address the, so this was more like a initial touch point so that get an overview about the medical programs worldwide and the students who are interested more on that we would definitely would love to conduct an offline workshop i'll take you through the program and explain more about the details about the clinical rotations about the opportunities they can have in us or if they want to come back to gcc and practice what could be the benefit more about that and answer your questions as well so we can consider this as a first touch base you know touch point for the taxila and as a university as a program and we would definitely conduct more you know programs going forward and uh, i would like if you uh, you could share with us some you know uh, like uh, brochures or any pdf absolutely I, yes yeah yes. which i could you know uh, forward to our students for more you know details we stay in touch absolutely for absolutely so i think i have yeah i, ha I also have my colleague uh, danya working there in qatar so she has a lot of our uh, hard copies of the brochure and pamphlets so i would make an arrangement for that you get the hard copy plus i will also share the soft copies that you can circulate in the email with the students and parents but i'll also share uh, get you the hard copy so that you can display in your notice board and you know wherever the students can read this material so i will get an arrangement to get that as well yes yeah 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 all right so and yes so uh, if anybody else have any further follow up questions all right so thank you so much asna again for taking out the time to give this opportunity to meet yeah. your students and share our information and thank you dr hugh for taking out and he's basically it's middle of the night for him he's you know presenting it from us so it's basically yeah, yeah. middle of the night for him thank you so much a huge thanks from our side for taking out the yeah. time you know yes. and to deliver this before this insightful session and we are definitely uh, looking forward to connecting you again you know connect more and share more details thank you thank you doctor thank you thank nice you. to meet you today thank you. and thank yeah, you nice to meet you for this wonderful uh, session